Welcome to Level Up Government Website Searching. My name is Roxana Cruz and I'm an SMC librarian leading today's workshop. So the three branches of government are the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. The legislative branch consists of the House of Representatives and the Senate. They pass, change, and repeal laws. The type of information they produce are bills and statutes, congressional committee materials, and proceedings of Congress, and so forth. The executive branch, which is the president, VP, and the cabinet, they carry out laws, run government day to day, and they produce um, government information that deals with presidential and regulatory materials. The judicial branch, which is the Supreme Court, they interpret law, settle arguments, and the type of information they produce are opinions from more than 100 US courts. So understanding the type of information each branch produces will help you decide where to start your search. Then we have the state and local government. They are modeled after the federal government with three branches of power, um, and they share their political power with the federal national government. The state here, we're referring to the governments of the 50 states, including California. And the kind of information they produce are similar, such as bills, laws. Um, they also produce periodical and magazines um, issued by the state. The local government refers to the county and city. The county is a, is a political subdivision of the state. Um, they deliver the services mandated by the state and federal governments for, for instance, health, welfare, criminal justice, election recordings of documents, weights and measures, and agricultural enforcement. The city um, produces its, its own government documents, such as public records of council meeting documents, building permits, plans, projects, and et cetera. So again, understanding the type of information you need to answer a research question is important because that would tell you where you have to start your search. And that means um, government levels as well as what website would be more helpful. And if you ever get stuck and you need help with that, you can also ask a librarian. Okay, so then we have so government information um, is freely ex freely available to us as citizens. It's our citizen right under the Freedom of Information Act, um, which provides the right to request access to records from any federal agency. It is often described as the law that keeps citizens in the know about their government. And federal agencies are required to disclose any information requester, requested under the FIA, unless it falls under one of the nine exemptions, which usually um, has to do with national security and so forth. Um, the public record is a result of the of the FOIA, and it contains information such as minutes, files, accounts, or any other documents that a governmental body is required to maintain and must be accessible to the public. These are not always free. Um, there could be a fee collected in obtaining a public record, and this is standard practice and it varies by state. Another um, program is the federal depository, uh, another, um, well, not program, but, um, well, yes, a program is a federal depository library program. They are administered by the U.S. Government Publishing Office, and then were established in Congress in 1813 to ensure that the American public had access to government information and depository libraries throughout the U.S. and its territories. So there's 1,150 federal depository libraries throughout the U.S. and its territories. They um, contain unique historic and, cur and current federal documents, and you can find them using their catalog or by visiting one of the libraries and asking a, li a, a librarian for assistance. Um, some of the local depository libraries near Santa Monica College are the Los Angeles Public Library, UCLA, the Los Angeles Law Library, USC, and Cal CLA. So there are so many um, uses for government documents, depending on your research topic. If you're, for example, researching um, about environmental factors like air, climate, soil, water conditions, um, you're interested in business or census, um, 
U.S. history, health, um, anything to do with health and the economy or any current issues that are happening in Congress. Government documents provide authoritative, credible sources to support your research topics. Um, many are scholarly and some are even peer reviewed, but not all government documents are. So depending on your research on your research topics, some documents may be a better fit than others. For example, some do government documents may be written to educate the general public, while others are technical reports written for experts in the field. So you'll have to evaluate the um, documents you find and see if they're suitable for your assignment. And if you have any doubts um, whether a publication is scholarly, um, just remember that public um, scholarly document um, research are written by and for researchers, scholars, or professionals in the field. Um, these will be somewhat um, lengthy and will cover a topic in detail with plenty of um, technical language. Um, they will also cite their sources, will have footnotes, um, a bibliography, or work cited, or work cited list. Um, and, but whenever you're in doubt, also ask the librarian if they can assist you with evaluating your source to make sure it's appropriate for your its intended use. So now that we know the basics of government documents, what they are, our rights under it, how they're freely accessible, where we can find them, and the diverse top uh, research topics that we can use them for. Now, before we, the next step is understanding your information need. Um, sometimes we'll have an idea of what we want to do, what we want to research. However, it's important that we start by understanding our information need, which is how are we going to answer or support our thesis. Um, and this is by first starting with understanding, um, sorry, by understanding your information needs, sorry, where is it that? Um, and then by identifying what sources you need to find, for example, um, what kind of, um, so you might wanna think about what kind of government information you, do you need to, um, to answer your research um, question, or what your what your what geographic um, jurisdiction and what time frame you need, um, depending on your research question as well. So, the next step will be to identify the type of source you need, and lastly, you want to recall any relevant existing knowledge to identify any and identify any gaps or uncertainties. This will help you figure out where to look to find the information you need. Um, and again, it's just, this is just to help guide you with the process. Um, okay, so Next, we have government website search. We have govinfo.gov. This is a great place to start if you're looking for federal government documents because it provides free public access to official publications from all three branches. All three branches. Um, I will do a demonstration of a search within govinfo um, uh, in a few slides, but this is free and you have access to it online. Another popular government website um, is USA.gov. It is the web portal of the US federal government. Um, from there, you can connect to the other um, websites listed here. Some of them you might be familiar with, like studentaid.gov, cdc.gov, which is the Center of Disease um, Control, um, and LOC, which is the Library of Congress. Um, and these are all, you can either go to them directly or you can go um, you can find them through USA.gov. It's a very user it's very user friendly, um, and it also connects um, website visitors to services and information. Oh, the website also has a direct a directory um, of other federal agency websites um, and departments. So I'll I'll point that out once we do the online searching demonstration. 
Then, um, so you there's another way you can find government documents. Um, some of you might be more comfortable using Google it and might be the first place you start your search. Um, but there's also an advanced search technique you can use to save you time and it's a site limiter. Here we have um, the word site colon dot gov. This is a command given to Google letting it know that you only want um, search results that contain the domain dot gov. This will this will retrieve only government website and I will do I would also and I will also do a demonstration of this. So let's get started actually with the online demo. Okay, so here we are in google.com and we're gonna start um, the search demo. We're gonna get started with govinfo. So that's govinfo.gov and here um, is the site. There's multiple ways to search within this. Um, you can browse documents A through C. You can browse by category by um, selecting a specific collection. Um, you can browse by date, committee, and author. You can also um, explore further um, documents and they do this really cool thing where they do features of specific collections and records. Here we have the Jan Jan uh, John F. Kennedy assassination records collection, the Thanksgiving, Veterans Day and so forth. They list some of the popular ones. And if you need any assistance um, trying to figure out how to search within this, there's also tutorials and handouts under the help section and other resources on how to find information. Um, it's very helpful. They try to make it um, easy and as, transparent as and transparent as possible. Okay, so let's go back up to the search box. We have this the basic search or we have the advanced search. Um, I recommend starting with the basic search only because you have to know a lot. Um, you need to know where your document is going to be and more detail. Like um, So if you don't know that, I would select, I would suggest starting with search. There's also the citation one, and that one is also in more detail. Let's say you were reading a scholarly article that mentioned, um, uh, let's say, a congressional bill, and you have the bill number um, in the Congress. You can put that in there, and if you have the bill number, you can move forward. If you don't, it won't allow you to. So this requires a lot of more information in order to retrieve. So if you don't have that on hand, I, like I said, I suggest starting with a basic search. So let's say you were interested in, re, uh, in Roe versus Wade. You can enter it like as is, as your keyword, and it will um, search for your keywords within the full text and through the metadata as well. As well. So here it is. Um, As you can tell here it's looking for it um, within the full text. You have your ways to refine your results, date it was published. You can also narrow by date. I mean, the government author, organizations, and so forth. Um, let's do congressional bill. So here's the Abortion Justice Act of 2023, which reverse um, Roe versus Wade. You can access it through PDF, through text. Um, you can read the details. Let's do PDF. And here it is. And you can read the bill and then um, use it for your research. You can, and of course, like any other feature, you can download it um, and print it out. Great. Um, let's see. Now let's do a quick um, demo of USA.gov. Okay, so that was the other um, website I share, which is a web portal to other um, fe uh, federal agencies and departments, super user friendly. Um, for example, here it starts, how do I? And it usually connects you to services um, and information. So this is a little bit more towards um, the general public, but you can go into, um, you can go in more depth depending on the information you're seeking. So they have these really user-friendly boxes um, to let you know how to find, well, to help you find the information you need without having to dig through the website. 
So if you want to learn about financial assistance um, because of disasters and emergencies, disability services, um, education, government benefits, health, immigration, U.S. citizenship, you click on the tab, it directs you to where you need to go. However, they also have a directory at the bottom of the page. So if you go here, you have the A through C index of U.S. government um, departments and agencies. So you can find like the Library of Congress here under the L's, just a matter of clicking through it. Or you can directly go to their page if you know the website. For example, if I knew I wanted to go, I write a history paper and I wanted to use primary sources, um, I would go to lsc.gov, takes me directly to the Library of Congress webpage. But let's say you didn't know the website, um, right? The URL to the website, then you and maybe you weren't familiar with usc.gov or didn't feel comfortable using it. There's another way of doing it um, through Google without having to sift through all the other results that are irrelevant. For example, one would be to do a site search. So let's say you were looking at, let's see, Native American tribes. Um, you would enter your key terms and then you would do the site search as I mentioned before, site uh, colon dot gov, then go. So no space between site dot gov, single space. And now you see, while I scroll down, pay attention to the websites that Google retrieved for me. They were all dot govs. So this gave Google the command to just do government websites. Here's one, National Atlas. Another way of doing this is to go to the, um, the quick settings, advanced search, and then here are the search boxes. Um, you can enter your keywords on the top, and then here you can narrow by language, by region, by site domain. So this is where you will like um, enter .edu, .gov, and so forth. And then you can also do by format. So if you only wanted to retrieve PDF files, you can also do that and then do an advanced search. So now I have not only government websites being retrieved, but government websites with PDF files. Okay. So after a quick demo on how to find um, government documents and how to search for them using some of the websites um, provided by the US government. Um, I also want to uh, bring something to your attention, and this is political bias. Um, for example, how do politicians decide which policies to support or not? So some of the documents you might find online, um, some of the government documents you might find online might be a bit biased. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, so. What does political bias mean? Well, it means that politicians or government entities, entities, um, stakeholders, they will present information to highlight a problem and offer a solution that favors their own political position, right? So the, this makes their personal position appear more favorable and their policies as the expected course of action. Um, so clearly they have an agenda and they're trying to push it. So we have to be aware of that. Um, and one way of doing, one way of evaluating um, some of these government documents is by using the same criteria we use for other types of information. For example, we want to look at the authority right of a of a document. So, uh, document. What are the credentials that are provided um, for the author? If there is a um, individual author or from the authoring agency, right? Then we want to look at the re reliability, uh, what sources there are, are in any sources cited, um, who supports it, who's backing it up. Um, another thing is we want to look at the accuracy, right? Um, how detailed was the collection of the information? For example, data collection was the how well was it vetted, right? 
Um, and if you ever have any doubts, um, you can also ask the librarian for assistance, or you can look for other sources um, that show both sides of the story, right? You wanna find coverage on that same topic from other reputable sources to see if they agree or if the information provided differs a bit. So you get the full story and not just one side. There's also government oversight and watchdogs. Um, these are individuals or groups that monitor activities of people in power and governmental organization. Their role is to inform the public in order to hold elected officials accountable. Uh, one um, well-known one is the US Government Accountability Office. They are actually a congressional watchdog. They're independent, nonpartisan agency that works for Congress and keeps them accountable. Then we have the USSpending.gov. This is an official um, site where they look at the spend, spending da data for the US government. And they're meant to be, um, and their mission is to show the American public what the federal government spends every year and how it spends the money. Next, we have the Federal Election Commission. They protect the integrity of the federal campaign finance process by providing transparency and fairly enforcing and administering federal campaign finance laws. Then we have POGO, or Project on Government Oversight. This is nonpartisan independent watchdog that investigates and exposes waste, corruption, abuse of power, and when the government fails to serve the public. Then we also have factcheck.org, also a nonpartisan nonprofit um, consumer advocate for voters that aims to reduce the level of deception and confusion in US politics. They monitor the factual accuracy of what is said by major US political players in the form of TV ads, debates, speeches, interviews, and news releases. So sources like these um, are, are very useful when you're trying to evaluate um, your government documents. You should always evaluate all your sources. Even if it's scholarly, always look at it with a critical lens. So thank you so much for uh, attending this workshop. And if you need any research assistance or, how, or evaluating um, any of your sources, ask a librarian. We're available through chat 24 seven or in person um, during our library operating hours. You can also contact me at cruz underscore maria underscore roxana at smc.edu. Thank you.